Chapter thirty one of Arizona Nights by Stephen Edward White. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Capture. Although he had left the room so suddenly, Senior Johnson did not at once open the gate of the adobe wall. His demeanor was gay, for he was a westerner, but his heart was black. Hardly did he see beyond the convexity of his eyeballs. The pony, warmed up by his little run, pawed the ground, impatient to be off. It was a fine animal, clean built, deep chested, one of the mustang stock descended from the Arabs brought over by Pizarro. Sang watched fearfully from the slant of the kitchen window. Jed Parker even listened for the beat of the horse's hoofs. But Senior Johnson stood stock still, his brain absolutely numb and empty. His hand brushed against something which fell to the ground. He brought his dull gaze to bear on it. The object proved to be a black wrinkled spheroid, baked hard as iron in the sunshine of Estrella's toys. A potato squeezed to dryness by the constricting power of the rawhide. In a row along the fence were others. To Senior Johnson it seemed that thus his heart was being squeezed in the fire of suffering. But the slight movement of the falling object roused him. He swung open the gate. The pony bowed his head delightedly. He was not tired, but his reins depended straight to the ground, and it was a point of honor with him to stand. At the saddle horn in his sling hung the riata, the rope without which no cowman even stirs abroad, but which Senior Johnson had rarely used of late. Senior Johnson threw the reins over, seized the pony's mane in his left hand, held the pommel with his right, and so swung easily aboard, the pony's jump helping him to the saddle. Wheel tracks slid down the trail. He followed them. Truth to tell, Senior Johnson had very little idea of what he was going to do. His action was entirely instinctive. The wheel tracks held to the southwest, so he held to the southwest too. The pony hit his stride. The miles slipped by. After seven of them, the animal slowed to a walk. Senior Johnson allowed him to get his wind, then spurred him on again. He did not even take the ordinary precautions of a pursuer. He did not even glance to the horizon in search. About supper time he came to the first ranch house. There he took a bite to eat and exchanged his horse for another, a favorite of his, named Button. The two men asked no questions. "'See Mrs. Johnson go through?' asked the senior from the saddle. "'Yes, about three o'clock. Brim Palmer driving her. Bound for Willards to visit the preacher's wife,' she said. Ought to catch up at the Circle Eye. That's where they'd all spend the night, of course. So long. Senior Johnson knew now the couple would follow the straight road. They would fear no pursuit. He himself was supposed not to return for a week. And the story of visiting the minister's wife was not only plausible, it was natural. Jed had upset calculations because Jed was shrewd and had his eyes in his head. Buck Johnson's first mental numbness was wearing away. He was beginning to think. The night was very still and very dark the stars very bright in their candlelight glow. The man, looping steadily on through the darkness, recalled that other night, equally still, equally dark, equally starry, when he had driven out from his accustomed life into the unknown with a woman by his side, the sight of whom asleep had made him feel almost holy. He uttered a short laugh. The pony was a good one. Well equal to twice the distance he would be called upon to cover this night. Senior Johnson managed him well. By long experience and a natural instinct, he knew just how hard to push his mount, just how to keep inside the point where too rapid exhaustion of vitality begins. Toward the hour of sunrise, he drew rein to look about him. The desert, till now wrapped in a thousand little noises that make night silence, drew breath in preparation for the awe of the daily wonder. It lay across the world heavy as a sea of lead, and is lifeless, deeply unconscious, like an exhausted sleeper. The sky been above, the stars paling. Far away the mountains seemed to wait, and then, imperceptibly, those in the east became blacker and sharper, while those in the west became faintly loosened and lost the distinctness of their outline. The change was nothing, yet everything, and suddenly a desert bird sprang into the air and began to sing. Senior Johnson caught the wonder of it. The wonder of it seemed to him wasted, useless, cruel in its effect. He sighed impatiently and drew his hand across his eyes. The desert became gray with the first light before the glory. In the illusory revealment of it, Senior Johnson's sharp frontiersman's eyes made out an object moving away from him in the middle distance. In a moment the object rose for a second against the skyline, then disappeared. He knew it to be the buckboard, and that the vehicle had just plunged into the dry bed of an arroyo. Immediately life surged through him like an electric shock. He unfastened the riata from its sling, shook loose the noose, and moved forward in the direction in which he had last seen the buckboard. At the top of the steep little bank he stopped behind the mesquite, straining his eyes. Luck had been good to him. The buckboard had pulled up, and Brim Palmer was at the moment beginning a little fire, evidently to make the morning coffee. 
Senior Johnson struck spurs to his horse and half slid, half fell, clattering down the steep clay bank almost on top of the couple below. Estrella screamed. Brim Palmer jerked out an oath and reached for his gun. The loop of the riata fell wide over him, immediately to be jerked tight, binding his arms tight to his side. The bronco buster, swept from his feet by the pony's rapid turn, nevertheless struggled desperately to wrench himself loose. Button, intelligent at all rope work, walked steadily backward, step by step, taking up the slack, keeping the rope tight as he had done hundreds of times before when a steer had struggled as this man was struggling now. His master leaped from the saddle and ran forward. Button continued to walk slowly back. The riata remained taut. The noose held. Bryn Palmer fought savagely, even then. He kicked. He rolled over and over. He wrenched violently at his pinioned arms. He twisted his powerful young body from Senior Johnson's grasp again and again. But it was no use. In less than a minute he was bound hard and fast. Button promptly slackened the rope. The dust settled. The noise of the combat died. Again could be heard the single desert bird singing against the dawn. This is the end of chapter 31.